Sony Imaging Edge Desktop is the best software to edit any RAW file from Sony camera. Not Lightroom, not Capture One, not DxO or other one. This is the one, the Sony Imaging Edge Desktop provided by Sony. So basically, you are editing a Sony RAW file with Sony software. Obviously, it's going to be the best. Yep, before I start this tutorial, I would like to mention that you can download any of those files from Sony website or DP review website and try it for yourself. And second thing about the software, which is unfortunately you cannot do local adjustment. Fair enough, but it can do about more than 60% of your editing right here and then export it to Photoshop, Lightroom, Affinity Photo or whatever else to do your local adjustment. Super easy, super simple. Now this interface right now you're looking at, this is actually the Sony viewer. It comes as a package. So essentially you will be going through the navigation and checking your images. You can do taggings, you can do markings like here, and then you can continue editing. And then you can do check your histogram, you can check your you know metadata, and all that pretty easy pretty simple nothing exciting about it the part that i'm going to show you how to edit this um how to use this software to edit photo so i'm not going to edit both one i'm going to particularly stay in this photo and then on the top left corner you have a button like that says start edit so i'm going to click that and immediately it will take you to the editing department and from there it cannot be more easy than that this is probably one of the easiest software I've ever used to edit photo. The most simplest interface ever. Sony knows exactly what they're doing. Now, first thing first, on the top level, you have the viewer and you are in the edit. Then you have the file where you can change your uh, preference and so on. Generally speaking, I don't really use that part. To be honest with you, that part doesn't really interest me at all. The part that interests me is the left right hand side where all the edit needs to be done now just a quick explanation then you have the zoom out zoom in and you can drag back and forth you can double click it let's say you zoomed in as much as you want i'm gonna just go up and then if you double click it it will go back immediately now what else i can show you now you have a couple of buttons which actually rotate back and forth about 90 degrees. You have the immediate crop. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to quickly crop it a little bit, not too much. And you can have a fixed ratio or you can just do a custom so that you do your way how to crop it. It's up totally up to you. So I'm just going to do a quick crop like that. And then I'm going to click close. So we have done a quick crop already. Now, looking at the histogram, it looks like it's a little bit underexposed, right? So we are going to fix the export with the brightness. So I'm going to click plus one and it's already nice, beautiful and bright. Pretty amazing. Now in the white balance, and before I go to the white balance quickly, every time you have done your editing in each section, I recommend you to close it immediately so that you know you have done your edit on that department. Then move downward. Then followed by you go to the white balance. Now in the white balance, of course, is going to keep the one that you had in your camera. Obviously, this is the Sony software. So it's going to keep all the settings you had in your camera, right? Now, personally, I go to the preset and keep auto because I really trust the automatic white balance correction of Sony software. Now, white balance is something very personal. So if you want something warm, you can make it warm. If you want something cooler, you can make it cooler. It's totally up to you. And you can do that right here. You have to click color temperature and move forward to make it warmer and move backward to make it cooler. I would personally go back to the preset and keep it to automatic. But if you had a gray card inside the camera, for example, you can click the specified gray point, click this little dropper and drop it anywhere where it is pure gray or pure white and make sure you drop it over there. I don't have it here, so I'm not going to show you, but this is something very basic and I'm sure that you know about it. And finally, in the white balance section, you have the color 
correction. The color correction is essentially simple. It's the tint. So you move forward, it becomes pink. You move backward, it becomes green. So essentially, if you have, let's say you are in landscape and you have too much green in the photo, you can move forward to balance the green tint or if you had too much you know red inside the photo you can go backward to get rid of the pink tint so that's how you do the color correction i'm going to click reset because i like the original look now i'm going to close that one now so that's our white balance then you have creative style i'm going to click open now again you have the camera setting but if you want to change it you have a bunch of lists to choose from in my case let's say i'm going to click portrait wonderful isn't it immediately pick the color that works well with portrait which is pretty freaking amazing but of course you have plenty of other you have clear which kind of i don't like way too contrasty for portrait you have the night view of course this is not a night photo but this is a very good mode if you had one you have neutral if you want to create your own color you have the autumn leaves let's see what it gives me i actually like the autumn lips gives a really nice orange ish look and you know many more you have the standard i'm going to i don't know if i could keep it between the portrait look or autumn lips to be honest with you i'm going to leave it to autumn lips but it's too orange for me so i'm going to control it later now you have the contrast in the contrast you have many 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 uh sliders a little trick always avoid the contrast slider Essentially, always about the contrast slider, highlights, shadow slider, white and black. Okay, black and white may be a little bit helpful. For example, I'm going to um, pull it up to recover some shadow, but you can completely avoid the whole slider, even the fade, for example. You don't need that. You can actually do it in another section of this software. So I'm going to click reset right now and show you in a little bit. Before I go there, I would like to explain you the D range optimizer. What is that? Why not I just show you first? I'm going to click off, then auto, then manual. In the manual, if I put it up, what's happening here? It is getting brighter. True. But it's also, if you look at the histogram, the highlight is not clipping at all. Now, this is what I was going to show you. So instead of using the contrast slider, I recommend you to use the D-Range Optimizer and use manual mode. That is a very good trick. However, there is a thing. What if you want that little fade? I'm going to show you in a moment. Hang in there. So you got the idea what the D-Range Optimizer does. Now, highlight color distortion. Essentially, what I understand, um, if it's oversaturated, it's kind of trying to fix the color distortion. So as in this photo, Actually, I don't have any kind of problem with uh, color distortion, which is a very good news. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, stay there. Now I'm going to close it too. Now we are in the color department. In the color, you have the hue and you have the saturation. Now hue, obviously you change, if you go all the way to minus 100, it changes the hue of every single color channel. If you go forward, it goes backward very interesting tool to work with i normally don't touch it because i never had to touch hue in my life so i recommend you not to use it instead play with the saturation because i think this is a little bit too saturated in my taste so i would go backward and make it a little bit a touch desaturated let's say about minus six should do very easy to understand now shading compensation what it what that means in plain english so you have the central radius. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. No, in this button. Now, if I, the central radius, if I go back and forth, nothing is going on, right? But you have this little box over here that moving back and forth. Let's take a look. You see that? It's like a video game. Now, central strength, if I go upward, what is happening, it's brightening around the photo, not the middle. And then if I go the central radius back and forth, now you can see the change. Essentially is the vignette. Now peripheral strength, if I go back and forth, it's make it round. So you can actually see in this little box exactly what is going on. So I'm going to click reset and I'm going to go to the central strength. 
and peripheral extent so that it has a nice bright look around the image not on her face because you always have to protect the face now this is very easy to understand right so i'm going to close the shading compensation now what i'm going to do i'm going to zoom in again 100 percent go to her face now in portrait i have a tendency to reduce sharpness not adding sharpness but reducing it why because you never ever ever want a portrait with a heavy sharpening done what do you want exactly quite the opposite so i'm going to go to the minus 20 and everything else to be honest with you i'm not going to even touch it then noise reduction i will leave it to auto i really trust the software the lens correction i'm going to turn on the distortion correction i'm going to make it fit so if i click off and then on you see a minor change a magnification chromatic aberration correction basically it controls the chromatic aberration which never bothered me now remember the last time i told you not to touch any section any slider of the contrast section so i told you to use the derange optimizer but you also have this little thing if you pull it up now you have this little faded look like instagram or vosco how cool is that so that's a little trick that you can use then you can control the curve to make it your way i personally quite like it one of my favorite essentially the far right is the highlight far left is the shadow middle is the midtone one of the most powerful and oldest tool of photography software any kind photoshop lightroom anything if you master tone curve you don't have to almost trust anything in terms of the contrast and brightness of your image i'm going to close it and display control what that means so if you click display clip shadow it will show if your shadow is clipped or not in this photo definitely there is no clipping then if you click display clipped highlight it will show you a minor uh, clip on, on on highlight on top which doesn't bother me now third one is personally to me is very important if you click it it says display out of gamut color what does that mean it means it is going to show you if any part of the image is way too saturated especially more than rgb or more than adobe rgb so i recommend you to turn this on on time to time if you think that you're using too much saturation what i'm going to do before i finish this tutorial i'm going to go to the crop and maybe pull the top down a quite a little bit and click close beautiful now it looks nice and personal to me so we are almost done in order to export this is one of the most important part obviously so in that case what are you going to do you're going to click output and then depends on your choice you can either export a 16-bit tiff or 8-bit tiff or you can change to jpeg and make sure you export the highest quality of jpeg and then click your select your folder click save and you are a happy person in the world so this is it very easy to understand software for sony camera so if you are if you have a sony camera and you don't want to pay the premium for lightroom capture one or any kind of other uh, premium software this is it this software should help you and if you need some retouching after that you don't need photoshop you can have gimp completely free and it does everything you need I hope you like this tutorial. If so, please like and subscribe and I see you in future video. Bye bye.